It's one of the most iconic photographs of the Victorian age. Brunel, during the construction of his steamship, the SS Great Eastern. The story of its creation reveals the real Isambard. An uncompromising individual with vision, ambition and drive. You see a man at the height of his power, um, he's wearing his hat, he's leaning very confidently against these gigantic chains which are being used to launch the largest ship in the world, and what was going to be the largest ship in the world for the next 40 years. But the assurance Brunel projects in the photograph is only part of the story. What is going on? in Brunel's mind is very far from that. He is beset with problems and difficulties. Uh, it's all going badly wrong. Just two years after the picture was taken, a very different image was captured. It's really poignant when you see the, the confident, healthy man against the chains, and then you see this fragile man who's aged 20 or 30 years. The troubled birth of his great babe, the largest movable man-made object in history, had taken a heavy toll. This is the ship that was so difficult to launch that beset him with so many worries and problems and difficulties that I, I think it destroyed him. This is the ship that killed Brunel. Born close to Portsmouth's dockyards, the young Brunel had always felt the pull of the sea. And in later life, his enduring passion for steamships leaps from the pages of his sketchbooks. The page where he first starts drawing the Great Eastern is it's, it's beautiful, I think, is the only thing you can say. So he's designing a, a huge ship, the largest in the world at that time. He's drawing the ship in the sea and how it's going to move from side to side and forward and backwards. But he's also an artist as well. So not only has he drawn the ship, he's also drawn smoke coming out of the funnel. He's got people on the deck. Also a little flag flying at the back. It's just, yeah, it looks extraordinary. The Great Eastern is an example of both Brunel's ambition and his commitment to innovation. At almost 700 feet long, weighing 18,000 tons, she was six times larger than any ship previously conceived. When the Great Eastern Company came to him to ask him to design a ship, one of the calculations that he started to make was how big would a ship have to be to get from the UK to Australia and back again, carrying its own fuel. And that's what the Great Eastern was designed to do. He saw it as a, a scientific and engineering system that would be at sea for a very long time with a lot of people on board, and he tried to approach every aspect of the planning of it uh, accordingly. It's the first ship in the world built in sections like a bridge and cantilevered out. It's the first ship built in compartments with bulkheads top to bottom. The first ship with a double hull and the first example of marine construction on an industrial scale. Constructing the Great Eastern was a massive undertaking. But Brunel had faced enormous challenges before. So what made this project so difficult? Things started badly when the company fronting up the cash for the build were dealt a bitter financial blow. It was built for the mail contract. The mail contract is a lucrative, guaranteed government contract. What went wrong was it lost to the peninsula and oriental. It lost to the p &O. The Great Eastern was a, became a white elephant as it was being built. It wasn't commercially thought through. It simply was never going to get the passenger numbers or carry uh, the amount of cargo that Brunel envisaged. 
Undeterred, Brunel pushes on. But rifts soon appear. Even if you're as brilliant and driven as Isambard Kingdom Brunel, you're not doing it on your own. And Brunel's last great ship was built in the yards of John Scott Russell. And they argued from the beginning to the end. Scott Russell had more of a, a management style to him that he would uh, manage and delegate. Brunel was not that type. He wanted to know every detail that was going on. As the thing was getting more and more expensive and money was tight, he was furious that Scott Russell was simply not coming back with the kind of information and the detail that he wanted. With the project running hopelessly over budget and behind schedule, Brunel writes to Scott Russell. I have tried gentle means at first. I must now strengthen the dose a little. If you do not see with me the necessity of shaking off suddenly the drowsiness of sleep that is upon us, and in fact, unless, as I say, on Monday next, we are busy as ants at ten different places now untouched. I give it up. Almost four years in the making, the SS Great Eastern drove Scott Russell into bankruptcy. Today, these wooden ramps are all that remain of her original launch site on the Isle of Dogs. But in November 1857, the troubled ship was finally ready to take to the Thames. When Brunel wanted to launch it, he wanted to do that quietly without a group of people watching because he thought there was going to be problems. But thousands of people turned up to see the launch of this monster. Because it, it towered over everything. They, they could see it for miles. It was an extremely difficult process and not one that, that Brunel enjoyed. He was angry when he saw the crowds. Brunel's worst fears were swiftly realized. He just had to slip down from the bank at low tide and be floated by the rising tide. But it's huge. They start the launch and nothing happens. It just does not shift. This is a man, Isambard King of Brunel, at the height of his power and celebrity, in front of a huge crowd, his biggest project ever, stuck on the ramps, and there's a tragedy as well. One of the workers is thrown into the air and, and, and is impaled, so somebody dies, which Brunel takes the blame for. He takes it as part, I suppose, of the process he's involved in, of changing the world and bringing in new technologies and new ways of doing things. And there will be failures, and many of the failures will be public, and they'll be pretty crippling and humiliating. But he goes on, incredibly, you know, psychological resilience. Despite being stricken by a kidney condition, throughout the harsh winter of 1857, Isambard laboured to get his great babe afloat. By then, Brunel's ill because he, he was a, a total workaholic. And this passion and commitment, he wanted to see that ship launched. Unlike the other projects that Brunel built, uh, he's put his money into this. Whilst he's trying to get the great ship into the water, the bailiffs are going round his house in London, putting a value on his property, his assets. I imagine he was uh, living a nightmare. The eventual launch of the Great Eastern in January 1858 came at a terrible price. Soon after this photograph was taken, Isambard suffered a stroke and collapsed. When we look at the Great Eastern, the construction and the launch, then we see someone who is not motivated by making money. 
I think Brunel was motivated by moving things forward, tangible progress, um, innovative solutions. And I think that forced him a lot of the time past the leading edge of, of, of his time into the kind of bleeding edge of technology. You're so far forward that you're, you're causing injury. The SS Great Eastern was the ultimate expression of Isambard's obsessive pursuit of progress and innovation. It's also an example of his lifelong overconfidence and determination to exert complete control. The giant ship exposed the conflicts simmering within its creator.